Welcome everybody. How you, How you doing? Cool. Good, good. Cool. Uh, we're we're a little. I guess I'm a little earlier. Uh, you don't. You don't. Why would I ask Mike? I gotta know. I don't know. I'm looking at guitars right now. You know. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing. Nobody does, sir. Nah, nah. No, nobody does. We just doing the best we can. I got so sick of my inbox. I, I started unsubscribing and I, I, I found something interesting that some, some of the people that I had subscribed to had created multiple, you know, they created another email mm -hmm. thing. And they just hooked me up to that since mm -hmm. I signed up for this. They hooked me. I was like unsubscribing and it'd come up and I would be on there. There'd be like seven or eight other emails that I'm getting from the same guy under different names. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what the hell? So got rid of those it's, real quick. It's scummy in my opinion, and it's probably borderline illegal. You know, scan spam, but they do it anyhow. <laughs> I came in at a good point when Mike saying borderline legal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think, well, yeah, I, I mean, there's a lot, lot of borderline legal and illegal stuff on the line. What were, what were you talking about? That's all I got was borderline legal. <laughs> oh, the spam for, that for Don's for, getting. For photographers to actually have a business in, in uh, Columbus. <laughs> oh, yeah. They're shady out there. Yeah. Yeah, sketchy, yeah. sketchy people. Yeah. It's, um, Are you uh, in Columbus, I, Ohio, Mark? Yeah. Oh man, I would go down to to Louis Simmons Gym and see if I could get pictures of his guys. He that's where West Side uh, West Side Barbell is. Oh, I got a friend that works out of West Side Barbell. Oh man, they those guys are monsters. Yep. Yeah, they're all on gear. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, they take a lot of protein. <laughs> oh no, Louis will tell you right off. He'll tell you he's said it in interviews. He's been taking steroids since '72 or something. Yeah. He says, "Yeah, it's just that's just part of the game, you know." But when it comes to powerlifting, West Side is legendary. Yeah. You have to get invited in there. It's not like I can go. Yeah. You can't just go and sign up. Like, there's not a desk for membership. Someone that works out there has to invite you in. Yeah. Is well, Columbus the, the town that has a, a bridge over a river that has a Y in it? Is that Columbus? Uh, the up, it looks like an upside down Y, like a No, I mean, when you're going on the bridge, you're still over the water and you have to go left or right. It has a like a fork in the road on the bridge. Is that it? No. Okay. I'm no, that's probably that. Cincinnati's got a river down there and they've got some more bridges and then i don't know if it'd be cleveland or not maybe even to, like all of the major cities are on either the great lakes or the ohio river so yeah i couldn't think i can't think of uh, of where it was but when i was a kid we used to go back to pennsylvania and somehow we'd end up going through columbus so we always went through columbus and i remember my my first memory of columbus is in the back of the old pontiac station wagon you know, looking up at the electric cables for the trains downtown. Mm -hmm. Thought that that was uh, that was my memory. So of it. Yeah. Well, we're gonna we're gonna talk a little bit about getting geared up here and stuff when uh, when Sid joins us. How are you guys doing? I see we got Jay, Mark, Terry, Steph, and uh, Mike. Mike, you getting some shooting done, sir? Uh. Working on it. I'm. <laughs> I I really want to get some people, so it's just kind of trying to figure out what I can do in the meantime. So you know, I recruited my son last weekend, got that one, and uh, yeah, I'm I'm starting to kind of. I, I think I am starting to fall into the little bit of the COVID funk or whatever because I can't shoot what I want to, and uh, and I'm starting to kind of peter out on on, you know, in studio stuff. Yeah. So, um, and then also with the winter time, that makes transporting big ass camera and chemicals a little more difficult too. Yeah. So, yeah. 
Have you have you looked for a space? Because I don't know what it's like around Omaha, but out here there are so many office places and that, that are empty. Everybody's working from home. Businesses are closing. You might be able to find a, a studio place that you could actually, you know, use as a place for people to come and shoot portraits. I've got 900 square foot in the basement, and it's all mine pretty much. <laughs> So, yeah, but, you know, I've got the room and I, I don't mind necessarily people coming over, you know, you know, for only doing it, you know, a couple people, you know, and I always, I tell everyone that's kind of my caveat right now is just limited to one or two people. But other than that, it's just, uh, how cold is it outside? It's not that bad. It's like 60 today. It's actually really nice. Well, that, but, I mean, you should be able to shoot out, shoot people outside. Right. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's not even transporting the eight by 10. That's easy. Cause I've got an F 64 backpack for that in the slide, you know, for, and all that stuff, but it's the dart box, you know, it's, it's, it's so unwieldy trying to get that thing or up the stairs and, and out the door is, is not easy. I actually need, I need to get a second one really. So I could just leave it in the garage. Or, uh, or while it's, or while you're having this problem, instead of letting the tools get in your way, just get some film and go shoot film. Oh, I've got a whole freezer full of film. There you go. Yeah. There, there yeah. you go. Don't let yeah. the excuse that you can't take the big box stop you from shooting. Load oh, up, sure. Load up some Triax and go shoot it. Yeah, yeah. it could. But I, I, I've got. Oh, I got a lot I need to develop still. <laughs> I've really kind of slacked off on developing. So I've got, I've got all these shot rolls and, and sheets of the freezer that I need to develop. <laughs> At least, at least with wet plate, it gets developed, you know. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta get on my developing as well. Sid, dude, you're here. How was your, how was your uh, vacation or your, your time off or time away? It was perfect. It was just a short three, three day getaway. Um, we got a really nice hotel and we just vegged out and we just walked up and down the streets and it's in the middle of Portland, Maine. And it was right in the middle of Portland, Maine. So we would just, we, valeted the car and for three days we just woke up and went outside and walked around so it was nice all right did you uh, there's a fish market down there with a great big steel uh wall and a dolphin and whales painted on the side or dolphins painted on the side oh, i didn't i didn't see that did you see that I no taking that down yeah. it's still there is it yep oh where where whereabouts it was right downtown if i remember right Down. there was a like a, there were some fish markets and and you'd have to walk towards the water. There yep. were some wharfs and boats and stuff parked out there. And it was a great big, um, it faced south, if I remember right. It faced south. And it was huh. a great big uh, painting of the ocean and a whale jumping out of the ocean or porpoise or some some kind of ocean inhabiting. I don't know. Nature. We'll uh, have to widen our search the next time we're up there. Really, really had a lot of, I really had a lot of fun there. You know First where time I ever is. had uh, caramel, salted caramel ice cream. Oh, mm -hmm. First time and last time I've ever had salted caramel ice cream. Yeah, they have a, there's a place called Mount Desert Ice Cream that is also near Acadia, but it's also, there's one in Portland and they have the most incredible like homemade flavors. It's just oh, so good, so good, so fattening, but so good. Well, I welcome to Sophie and Chris who just joined us. So we were, we were uh, discussing what to talk about and, and uh, Sid and I were, were talking about the way you pack, you know, when you're gonna go and do a gig. And uh, that's really been on my mind lately. I've, I'm still renovating the office. Everything got in my way that shouldn't have gotten in my way, including, uh, when's the last time this happened? You order stuff to do the remodel of your house and they say it'll be in the first week of january and you go ah oh, so long you know and then they deliver it three days later so the <laughs> garage the garage is full of <laughs> bathtubs and vanities mirrors lights and stuff and i can't even get my motorcycle out to go for a ride because it's just chock full so i wait till the end of next week before i can even start to uh, finish up what I'm doing in here. So anyway, and the living room is a mess because there's so much stuff stacked in there. But uh, <laughs> best laid plans, huh? Uh, but I started thinking about as I'm gathering up all my gear and putting it in different piles, how much gear I have, and I realize I'm gonna have to make a like a, 
small gig kit yep. and a big gig kit. Uh, and uh, we were talking about how you do that, you know, um, ways to make that work. But before we start that, we will talk about the dangers, kids, the dangers of eBay. <laughs> What's that? What'd you get? An F, is that an F4? F5. F5. It is in mint condition. And it was, get this, the F5, I paid $325 for it. You can't find an F3 for under $525. And if you can find an F2, they're about $700. Mm. So the newest ones are the cheapest ones, except for the F6, which is still going for a nice chunk of change. Mm hmm but uh, oh my, <laughs> as they say. Thing now, were you is, looking for that, or did you, did you just come across it in your in your oh, rabbit it, hole it, of eBay searching? Yeah, and thank you for, so much for bringing up that memory. Um, <laughs> no, I was uh, I was talking to a guy, and he was just he, we were talking about the F four, and he was like, "Yeah," and I got an F five, and he says, "I gotta tell you." The F4 is nice, but the F5 is just like a dream. And I'm thinking, see, I remember the F4 because I didn't want it when it first came out. That's why I went to Canon. So I never even looked at the F5. I had no idea. And he was, oh, you got to get it. So I, you know, a couple of days later, I went on eBay and I saw some stuff and I put it, put eBay away really fast. And then I went up again and I'm like, oh, man. Um, and then I saw this thing from Japan, from the same dealer I was buying from in Japan, and it said in in very good condition. Well, if this is very good condition, I can't even imagine what mint would be. Right. In my wildest imaginations, I can't imagine. This thing just looks like it came out of the box yesterday. It's so pretty and clean, and, and it's got one little wear right there on the corner. Looks like maybe he had something that rubbed up against it in a camera bag or something. But even the film transport is clean. There's no, there's no, it doesn't look like film ever went in it. Mm. And I just thought, you know, for, I got to get it. I got to get it round out. So now I don't need <laughs> anything else. But I did see a really good price on a contacts. I'm just saying. Oh, goodness. I hate eBay. Ah. That's right. So how do you pack? Sid, what's your pay? So when I'm doing location work with just one person, um, I've got a little kit that I've been using. I have the same old Sunpack 120J, which what? I sort of nicknamed. Thing is, I love that. I have the used this handle? thing. The big um, handle? The big handle? No, it's, it's, it's like a, it's got a little pivoting head and it comes with a little circular refractor that you can take off and it's got a. Is it one of those they used to call them a potato masher? Oh, I don't know. No, I don't Does think it, so. It doesn't have a handle on it. No. Okay. Oh no, no. I know what you're thinking of. No, I don't. Okay. No. This is made by Sunpack. It's about. It's about. I don't know. It's yay big. I've had it for like 20 years. The thing is literally broken in half on me, and it's at this point it's held together by like gaff tape and the Holy Spirit. <coughs> and I I use that thing like like crazy. Like I just love that thing. So my location stuff is a light stand. Um, that 120J, a battery pack, uh, and then my camera. And then I've just, you know, I shoot wirelessly and stuff. And most of the work that's on my website that's location stuff, it's just one light. It's that little 120J. Um, and that's like all you need. And then when I have corporate gigs for larger thing, half the studio comes with me. I've got these seahorse cases that are just filled with junk. Um, and I just figure for, for location and commercial stuff like, it's better to be way over prepared than completely under prepared. So I, I bring everything like in triplicate. Like if I need, if I know I'm going to need two lights, I'll bring six lights. Uh, and I've got one, two, three, I've got three cases and I bring a whole mess load of light, light stands and C stands. And then I've got, um, where are they? You can see them right there. I've got some rock and roller carts, which, which are worth their weight in gold. So I just load those things up and I bring them in. But location with just one person, man, I love it. Cause it's like everything I can fit in basically a bag, um, and it gives us a chance to just walk around outside and we'll find a spot and we'll just set up really quick and we'll get some shots. And yeah. I, I, I used to have the Norman B200 mm -hmm. and that went with me 
everywhere. Yeah. That was just part of the gear. I, I always make sure that I have backups yep. and, uh, uh, and, and my friend Dave Siegel says, you know, he has backups to his backups, mm-hmm. you know, so he's triple redundant. Um, I am probably triple redundant on most shoots if I have film with me, because I've always got a film camera. So I've always got an EOS film camera and a Nikon film camera. It's been my F3, then it moved to the F4. Mm-hmm. They're, they're with me. So if I have three rolls of film and something happens digitally, I feel confident I could probably get it on, on the film. So I always make sure I've got that film with me. Yeah. Um, but I'm not, not triple redundant in digital at all. No. I've got two bodies and, of uh, Nikon, two bodies of Canon, and that's it. But uh, I'm redundant in uh, Mamiya got two bodies of rbs but those are so heavy i mean you, there really is a point to where you where you can be gear crazy and still be too too uh you can be very heavy with gear but still be too light for the job yeah so i kind of make um i make a checklist based on what i know i'm going to be doing for the client based on the conversations we've had <clears throat> And then I ask myself, what are the contingencies? Mm -hmm. What happens if? Batteries are always a a huge. Yep. Yeah. The first thing I do in any like corporate gig is I have a, like a long B a long plug-in bar Mm -hmm. and I I'll just, even if I don't need to charge the batteries, I'll just set all the chargers up and I'll, start by just putting a battery on each charger that way no matter what we're doing if for some reason i throw a battery and it's not working i can be like just head over there and grab a battery and and, throw and I, it in. I take the bar with me so as soon as i get on location um the, i've got these um newer strobes that use the nicads yep so i have two extra nicads i put them right on the charger right now yep you know yep. so i have them even though they're already charged i'll have them fresh because that's my fear with the nicads is that something will happen. They'll short out. They, just, they yep. won't be as full as you thought. And then the strobe is literally a brick. You, there's yep. no double A's. I don't know. Uh, do you shoot Nikon at all, Sid, or you all Canon? No, Canon. One of the things I love about my 6Ds is they, is I have optional um, AAA, uh, no, double yeah. A battery inserts. Yep. That I yeah, take for the grips. Too. Yep. yep. So if that if the, my batteries die and for some reason I don't have extra ones, I can go triple A and get yeah. another two three hours of, of uh, heavy photography out of them. Yep. And then I also bring I picked up um, a few years ago those little one of those little Paul Buff mini vagabond lithiums. Yep. Uh huh. So that way, if we get to a corporate gig and the extension won't reach, or we go into a room that doesn't have any power accessible. I know I can plug one or two lights into those. I used to have that big 20 pound stupid thing that they put out. That oh, thing was the a big pain orange the, thing? The big orange thing. And that was such a pain in the nuts to, to lug around. 24 and pounds. Yeah, yeah. It was, and then there was like a thing where it was, I first got it and it came with a little piece of paper that said, trickle charge this thing when you're not using it at all times. So I left it in and then two or three years down the road, they, they were like, oh, we made a mistake and we issued a new thing saying you're not supposed to be doing that. So the next time I went to use it, the battery had kind of shit the bed. Um, but right around that time, I was like, well, let me check out these little mini lithium things. And those things are incredible. Like they're so small and lightweight and you can just, well, you just can, throw it in a case. You can run your laptop from them. Yeah, you can just you yeah. can do anything from those things. They're, Pretty they're much really, anything. really good. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of people, the first and second gen ones, people started to sell them when the newest version came out. So I just snatch up the, the older ones. Yeah. I mean, they still work and they still do exactly what they're supposed to do. Yeah. I've got three of them and five batteries. Yeah. Three, yeah. Three ba- battery packs and five batteries that, that go in them. So, yeah. So um, that little battery has changed now instead of, you know, having a bag full of double A's and, and that sun pack. I can just charge that thing and I'll just grab one of my studio lights and I can throw everything on a city stand and take it outside with me. So I can, I can get a little more power. The one thing about using the flashes was it sort of dictated to me when I could sort of shoot. Like I, it's more, and a lot of times too, especially in the summer, people will call and if it's a headshot that they want to do outside and they can only do it like at lunchtime when the sun is at its you know grossest. Oh yeah. Um, so it was nice having, it's nice having a little extra power now where I can just kind of, plug an alien be into one of those little battery things and it's like well, it's just as portable yeah and then that's i was telling a, a photographer they were looking at the we were looking at the godox the uh the 8300s 
mm -hmm. which are very nice units. Um, 300 watt seconds and a built in battery. They, they're like the 8200s. Are you familiar with those? They look like great big oversized speed lights. I've seen them, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the 8300 is the same way, just a great big oversized speed light, runs on a battery. Uh, and I think they're like 400 bucks. And I said, look, you can get an SK400, which is the plug in model, mm -hmm. 400 watt seconds, and a buff battery. Yeah for $300, your same price, you've got more power and more versatility. Yep. So, yep. yeah, people use the, 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 if they ask me, they're like, you know, all these, all these new little speed lights that are out there, like, what would you get if you were just starting out? And I'm like, get one of those lithiums, get a used one, and then buy an alien B because you can get more power out of basically for the yeah. same cost as you could if you bought a Nikon Speedlight or something, and then you're still, you know, you're still fighting for power. So there's there's nothing better, really, if you're going to only have one light, uh, and you need power. Uh, the Paul Buff, what's it called? The uh, not the Alien B. It's a standard. Yeah, Einstein. Einstein. Yeah. Paul Buff Einstein is. I mean, you just, you really can't hardly beat it. Maybe with the the with the um, the Godox, a, mm -hmm. uh, SK600s, those are really, really nice too. And they, But they're still about the same price, you know, yep. right about somewhere around 500 bucks. What I yeah. like about the Alien Bees is they'll come all, all the way down. They're also, uh, the Einstein is also light as like, a. I mean, it, it's super light. It's like a toy. Can't yeah. Even it. yeah, it's like a little plastic shell. And yeah, yeah, I've got Alien, I've got my, my original, the Alien Bees that I still use, I bought in 2000 and three they're not pink, i have yet i have yet to even have to replace a flash tube in them and yeah, these things like i have knocked these things down and i've kicked them across the floor and they do good for you know their price and what they are they're made my friend well david made got two out of them two brand new sb uh, the, the alien b um what do they have b 400 600 800. 800 or something like that or uh four the middle eight and 1600 16. he yeah. got two of the middle ones yeah the 800s brand new took them up to saguaro lake was shooting on the dock and a boat hit the dock and they both went in the water so we called up alien b <laughs> on monday and said they're in the water they're, they're they're damaged i need to order two more i'm hoping i can get them quickly and they said no problem we'll send them right out he said do well okay uh you know do i owe you anything for the the you know i, I know i got to pay for the batteries i said no you don't have to pay for batteries they're fine we said, well, do you want me to send these waterlogged ones back? Yeah. And they said, no, we, well, nothing in there we want. Just throw them away. Then they sent him two brand new batteries. Yeah, what are we going to do with them? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, a brand new. Yeah, lock, they've got really good. Kits. They're fantastic customer service. Yep. Yeah, they yeah, do really well. The only the only problem I've ever had with them is the yokes. I wish they used yokes that were more sort of industry standard than their sort of makeshift yokes that they use. Um, just because in a couple of times I've, I've worked with people that have had different lights and we were able to interchange things, but the alien bees, you can't, you can't strip them down and interchange them. So, um, but they're I mean, they're fantastic for the price. And, and, you know, a lot of times you can find this stuff cheap. I, I bought an extra set, the three set, the three that I have are one of them you turn on now and he's just like, uh, like he'll whine for about 15 minutes before it, it gets better. Um, and there was a guy that I think it was Godox. He got, he fell in love with the Godox stuff. And he decided he wanted to sell these three 1600 alien bees that he had just bought like a year before. They're brand new. I think he used them for like two gigs. Um, and so he was like, I'm going to sell them. And I was just like, why don't you bring them in? And so I got the three of them for 300 bucks, hundred bucks a piece. It was crazy, but he just, he wow. wanted cash now because he had already ordered the other ones. And he was just like, I just need the money to put towards those things. So it would, it cost, I had contacted alien bees and I was like, I've got three that need to come in for a tune up. And they, basically broke down to like about a it would be they were like just to send them in and have us sort of get, go over them and replace everything you know you're talking about 125 dollars 135 dollars or something like that with shipping so i bought these things that were brand new cheaper than it was to send in the older ones so now i've got an extra set um that they, they just live right in this case and the minute i get a corporate gig they, they go right with me and then the studio stuff can stay here and i don't have to worry I, about I, i'm the out. same way i have location lights and i have studio lights I used yep. to take my pro photos out on locations. They're too heavy. They're too big. Yep. I'm not doing it anymore. I've got two um, uh, AD 200s. I've got uh, 
two of those little really cheap um the godox the 300 watt side they were they under a hundred dollars a piece and i plug them into the batteries so i've got four really good lights that can go out in a case about this big yeah and 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 i'm happy if it's a bigger job than that i'm probably not the guy to shoot it um yeah. you know i don't i don't take I don't take that. I don't take as many jobs as like I'm offered. So I don't want to. I don't want to go and shoot a catalog anymore. Done it. Been yeah. There. Had a really good time. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I've assisted on guys that have done really big jobs, and it's it's interesting. Like over the years, I'm I'm trying to find this sweet spot of where I want to be. Like I've watched guys that you know they truck in three trucks worth of stuff, and we unload. And I'm like, I don't, I don't know if that's the, I don't think I want to be that person. Like I'm cool with, you know, bringing in a load of gear and setting up, but I don't know if I want things that big, but I suppose when you get to that level, you've got, I mean, you're line iteming people that handle that kind of stuff, like project managers. And I want someone sure. to come and hear this. And I sure. want someone to. And sometimes there's a little bit of showboating going on. Yeah. If you're being paid four or $5,000 a day and you walk in with a speed light, you know, attached to your nighttime, <laughs> um, they might they might feel like uh, you know yeah you um, walk in with a flash that's held together by gaff tape and they're just like mm, I don't know about this yeah so yeah <laughs> those are those are those are things but uh, you know backups to backups uh, let me ask you a question also are you a tripod shooter or pretty much handheld pretty much handheld um, the only time I do it is if I'm doing like macro work um, in the studio but other than that. Yeah, I never, you know, most never of the time really headshots and stuff. No, I'm all handheld. Let's find out what uh, other folks are up to. Yeah, who wants to share? Stephanie, you got a you got a to go bag, right? Your sounds messed up. You got the chipmunk thing going again. She's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's gone. Uh, Mark, coming back. Mark Ryan, you're, you're just hitting the streets now. So it's going to be fun following uh, Mark. Said Mark has been in Project 52 now for a year. Yeah. It's got a pretty darn strong book. Is, is the uh, shingle out? The, the sh <laughs> yep. Shingle's going out uh, 1st of January, and uh, it'll be fun to follow along. He's also yeah. uh, kind of a. Uh, a go-getter in that uh, he's going to do the marketing. He's going to do the email and he's going to do all the stuff that he needs to do. Um, Good. Because yeah. bottom line, it all has to be done. There's no yep. shortcut, just none. So, yeah. and for me, this is, this is what I, I want to do. Like, this isn't um kind of like this. I I'm, I'm going to make sure that this happens, you know, no matter what, because it's just, I'm going to get the emails out there and, you know, even right now I'm Ubering to make sure I can cover bills and stuff. And even when I'm doing that, if I have anybody that they ask about it or we're talking about it, like I, I passed out a car to a guy today that he was on the way to the airport. He's going to Atlanta um, to do a music video with some, somebody down there. He's a music producer. So he said he was going down there to do a video. I'm like, oh, are you a videographer? And he said, no, I'm a producer. And I'm like, oh, I was like, well, <laughs> I'm a photographer. So, you know, we got talking about that. And he got out of the card with a card or he got out of the car with a card. So I'm constantly. And now, now you got to get, you got to get a really good lead behind Mark. Two mm -hmm. pictures on one side, one picture on the other side, all that stuff. Someone says that to you, you know, reach over and give them a lead behind something yeah. that's that's got some photographs and something that's memorable you also okay. might think about carrying a little uh five by was it five by five or six by six um blurb portfolio in your car yeah pretty i want to get yeah i want to get two of those done um one that has more people in it and one that has more product stuff in it and then depending on who I'm talking to, like if they're more in the people area, like a lawyer or something like that, Hey, look at this people book. And then if it's something different then you know what I mean? Sure. Would that be a better way? Sure. Absolutely. I, I just right. printed up as a little handout. Um, I went to my local, it was, it was like a Kinko's, it was a printer, but I did, I did a mock-up that was two 
two pieces of paper double sided. Um, so when you printed them and folded them up, it was like a little eight page booklet. Mm-hmm. And, and I just stapled them together as needed. And, and it's pretty good. And this is all geared towards like commercial stuff. So it's just a quick kind of thing. Like when they're asking for something, yeah. it's like, oh, here, here you go. Like, and it's got contact information on the back and yeah. And they're cheap too. Like I got, uh, I, think I got it? like, I, it was from a local, it was just like a local Instaprint okay. or pr- like a local person where I just kind of okay. walked in with the files and I was just like, can you guys do double-sided color? Um, and it was really cheap and the color, you know, like the colors aren't like, to to spec right. um right. but it's good enough that like you know i got i think a yeah. thousand of them and then i just staple 10 or 20 of them at a time and we leave them out here for open houses and stuff but it's great because it's just it fits in the bag i can hand it to them and they're like oh this is cool it's like a little booklet i always figured like a card is small but if i can get somebody both of their hands on something then i've right. got their attention for eight or ten seconds yeah yeah. And as far as, as far as gear goes, because I have the studio downtown and um, I've been trucking gear back and forth when I'm going up there. I shot the jewelry up there. So I had a whole Jeep full of stuff that I took. And then I've done some portraits up there. But so I've been taking just I have three, three of the MS 300s, the Godox MS 300s. And yep. I've got a, a suitcase from a yard sale for five dollars, like one of the luggage cases. So I just use the foam thing out of the boxes that they come in yeah. and put them in the suitcase. And then I put all of the cords and triggers and, and stuff like that as much as I can in a suitcase. And then I have a big, um, a big mesh, uh, scuba diving bag that, I, it's big enough for, um, my light stand. So I'll put all my light stands and stuff in there. So pretty much between the suitcase, that bag and a backpack I have, have everything let me give you a tip go through your bag when you know when you know that's the bag and you want to take okay go through it itemize it on a file card or something Mm -hmm. have it laminated and get that file card into the bag like with a like a airline tag or something it goes in the bag so when you're packing the bag you make sure everything goes back in there because the thing that doesn't go back in there is the thing that you're going to, you're going to remember uh, two and a half hours later down the freeway <laughs> yeah. that you took that, that proprietary sink cord that you hard to find and left it on a shelf somewhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Believe me, when I started, I when I finally did that, I stopped losing gear. Yeah. yeah. My plan is to, as once I get jobs coming in, um, to be able to get away from having to take everything I have here. And this way I can just leave my stuff here. And I want to get a kit like he was talking about where two eighty two hundreds. I think Stephanie, you use eighty two hundreds too, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I want to get two of the eighty two hundreds and a speed light. You know, I have a speed light already, but I'd like to get a separate kit, two eighty two hundreds and a speed light and you know, stands and I was that I was going to get can... something for my uh, speed lights, but I got it. It's got to be a pickup truck because I own fourteen speed lights. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need any any more speed lights. And then, of course, you no, know. no, I don't need fourteen, Mark. I don't <laughs> even need the most I've ever used on a job is thirteen. So that's really why I'm just way over there. Well, you got uh, your backup one, and then you have seventeen backup, light stands. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> Because you need a light stand for each speed light, and then you need light stands for your reflector cards, and then you're still going to be short. A stand. I need a, so I still need the pickup truck. Yeah. <laughs> no yes. escaping that. And then Stephanie's number one piece of gear that she takes on her shoots is her hard hat. It's awesome, isn't it? Yeah. I, I, I want to have you send that to me so I can trick it out for you. <laughs> I know. I need some stickers, some skulls, some flags. I'm not, no, no you stickers. Need a GoPro helmet, GoPro thing on the top. <laughs> right. No yeah. stickers. I'm going to airbrush it. You gotta airbrush you. it? Yeah. Uh, that'd be awesome. <laughs> Put a picture of Dawn on one side. Do you ever, <laughs> do you ever wish you had more power stuff with the 8200s? Mm, no. Um, I, I have a 280-200s. I have the, their lithium-ion uh, Godox speed light so that it uh, also connects. And then I have an AD-400 if I do need more power. Okay. So sometimes I will use the 400 as a main and then the others as the side lights and backlight. So that way I have up to four that I could take with me. But yeah, so like all you guys are talking about, I have a cart, you know, same thing and all that that I take. But most of the time, the stuff that I'm doing, 
I, it's only what I can carry on my body because sometimes we're hiking up these hills or walking or whatever. So that's where I'm trying to like before I was wearing different purses because as a girl I could get away with that and stuffing lenses in it and and so that's why I got this holster thing so I can hook things on both sides and I can get pouches that hook on it too so I feel like I look like the dorkiest thing ever with this like monster tool belt of camera gear <laughs> but it's like otherwise you can't you know you, you can't hike up and down these you know mountain sides um, and I do have the backpack, so if I can, I can bring the backpack, but then I have to find somewhere in the dirt to set it down. And, and you're still limited by how many stands you can carry. You're just, <laughs> there's, you know, you just really are. I mean, you can take four lights up, but if you don't have someplace to put them, you know. It, it, it and all this work. stuff hiking on the mountain is, there's no lights. I mean, sometimes I put a speed light, like if it's a really harsh sunlight, I'll put the speed light on the camera just to fill in, you know, a little bit, um, but I don't have any other mounted lights. That's only if we're inside doing, you know, or you need, stuff. You need to look up getting a tactical, like, uh, like for my military surplus place, the load bearing vest, like it, it has all the pockets, like in the belt and stuff like that how do we you get know, all this to look cool that's what i want to know <laughs> you know when you when you buy a vest that's called load bearing that's when you know you may have crossed a line hey i got a new orange safety vest that has all these pockets and i was all excited about that so i was going to ask you on your 8200 this one only holds the one but they have one that is round where it can hold two do you use one of those do you ever have to double up your 200 i haven't yet because i just use the 400 if i need more power um so no i've just used them single but i love the 200s because i i have the round head and i think mm -hmm. the round head on the 200s has a better color light than it does plain or with that fresnel head and then the round head has the little magnetic things that you can connect to it. So I'm constantly doing that with my gels. You just put a little piece of the gel and then you stick your little magnet ring to it and you can just swap things out really fast. So I, I love the 200s with that round head. Yes. Speaking of lights, if anybody's looking for a cheap alternative for a, a video light, I have one of those. And then I went to Walmart and you know those little clamp lights that's got the light bulb attachment that goes inside of it? Yeah. I look at that. Try to make it so it's not super bright. I clamped it. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. So oh, it's got God. the attachment. It's got the Bowens mount. So you can use one of the LED lights from Walmart and one of them little clamp lights with your softbox. Look at that. If you're looking yeah. for a cheap LED setup. I set it over on the other side of the laptop. And then put Looks a good. white card to kind of knock down on. So if someone wants an, a cheap LED light for doing video, that's a good way to go. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I got to tell you, um, I have, I have really been excited about what my little led i'm trying to find it here on amazon is this it well i mean let me show this this is not the exact one that i bought but it's very similar to the one i bought and it's the same price range the one i have is about this big okay mm -hmm. um i gotta tell you these things are so powerful they're so powerful that uh, we were doing uh, pictures of the baby. My wife was trying to do pictures of the grandchild and the light was streaming in through the window behind. So the, can the iPhone was constantly underexposing. You know, it was just too much heavy backlight. I grabbed this little panel, which has its own built-in battery. They're like $50 free shipping at Amazon. Has a built-in battery, so it charges when it's on the cord. I went in and I held it for a main light maybe four feet, five feet away from the baby on one quarter power, it was absolutely stunning light, stunning light. So I thought, whoa, I didn't realize they were that powerful. Mm -hmm. I took it outside and I can beat the ambient light in the shade of my porch with that thing at about a foot and a half at 18 inches. I can do 
tabletop photography with almost no ambient um, involvement at all with those panels. That's way more light than I expected that thing to have. So uh, I used to say there was two things every photographer should have. Number one, it's a, sh a target shower curtain because you can use it for everything from taping to a wall for a bounce. It's a great scrim. You know, there's a hundred uses for it and it's cheap. The second thing are those five in one reflectors. Still think mm -hmm. that's the best lighting bang for the buck. I don't care. You've got the diffuser, you've got the black, the silver, the gold, everything, right? Now I'm saying, okay, and get one of these panels. That, that diffuser panel or that shower curtain with one of these lights, if you are on location shooting food or jewelry or pottery or something, you do a hell of a, do a, hell of a job yep. with a two, two panels for under a hundred bucks and two um, uh, of your uh, bounce cards. I mean, it, you could, really, really. Could you put the work. link in the in the chat, please? The link. Yeah. Uh, for the using, for what, the panel. What you're using. Yeah. Yeah. What you're using the LED yeah. panel. Yeah. Because I've been thinking about buying one. I just didn't know what to buy. I have a little panel, but it's not near that bright. That sounds really, really great. And like this idea with the shower curtain, I was like, yeah, I'm all over that one. <laughs> well, that's, that's, uh, what are your, what are your top three things? Sid? Oh, as far as what? Every photographer should have these three things. You know, like, the last, I, I've been able to satisfy my urge to buy stuff. Um, but the sure. last few years I've been trying to focus just on things that will really make my life easier. So one of the things that I've done is, uh, I got one of those, um, hold on a second. My light just went on. Um, uh, I just blanked on the name. Hold on one second. I'm, uh, uh, rock and roller carts. I would say that thing has been fantastic just because I don't have to make multiple trips anymore. If I, if it's just me on a gig. I've got that thing. It, it's like 85 different things in one um, C stand. Get yourself a really nice C stand. Like I've spent quite a while getting rid of all the plastic light stands that I've had. And I've got a, a bag <laughs> of stands here in the studio. Um, I mean, they're just, they're going to, I just want stuff that's going to, at this point, I want stuff that's going to last forever that I don't even have to worry about, re, you know, replacing every couple of years. Um, and then what else? I, that's about it. Really, just like those two are the, the most important things, I think. Like, I really wanted to save up and get a really nice rock and roller cart. Uh, and that's just made my life so much easier. Like, it's just. I so agree easy. with you on C stands, by the way. Yeah. I mean, they're a little heavier, um, but, yeah. you know, there's a reason why they're industry standards. I and mean, you can do anything with those stupid things. And I'm, um, I'm also big know. on on it. If you don't have one, you should have one really good, sturdy boom. It's like yep. absolutely got to have a boom. You got to be able to get your big light, whatever your big light is. Maybe it's a, you know, a 20 by 24 by 36, or maybe it's a 72 inch octa. I don't care. Whatever it is, your big lights got to be able to get up over your set. Yep. Uh, and there's no, uh, just no um, substitute for that. No. No. And oh, number three, sandbags. Sandbags, sandbags, uh -huh. sandbags, sandbags, sandbags. Sandbags. Yep. You know what we use here in the <laughs> desert? You know what we use out here? We use water. Oh, the, yeah. Water yep. things? Because yep. if you're out here in the desert, you should have water anyway, with you extra, right? So uh, it's a pain in the ass to carry them up the hill or whatever to, to weight it down. It is. Yep. But you don't have to bring them back. Right. You just pour the water out on the happy little cactus that are happy to receive <laughs> the thing and carry the empty ones back. Well, I have I have an alternate to that. I carry empty. I'm not in the desert, so I just carry empty, you know, liter bottles with me when I get wherever I am. I fill it up with water, and that's what I use to weigh things down. Okay. That way, I'm not carrying anything heavy. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's a great idea. <laughs> if you know where you're going has water, that's exactly. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm going to share my screen. This is the, I found the one that I that I own. I own two of these. Own two of these. 
These are the ones where you just plug it in, the battery is built in and you've got um, color, temperature and you've got um, power on it. Huh. And um, the battery lasts, uh, I left it unplugged. I had this thing on half power. It was unplugged for about six and a half hours. So I was pretty damn amazed and pleased at that. And how big are they? Um, let's see. Oh, the camera light is 10 inches the size of A4. Oh, so it's yeah, it's, a, it's about like, the size of a piece of paper. It's smaller than an eight and a half by 11. Here, I'll, I'll do it scientifically. Um, <laughs> Everybody grabs a piece of paper. It's smaller than a bread there box. There. <laughs> the here to here. Okay. Well, eight and a half by 11 minus two inches from the bottom, an inch and a half on the right. Okay. Huh. <clears throat> um, I'm, I'm, I'm scared of myself how much I like these things. <laughs> it's like, you know, all of, a, all of a sudden I'll be giving away my pro photos. I'm, I'm just using these $60 light panels. But hey, if they work, they work. It's uh, I'll for be... what most of what we do for the product stuff, you, it's fine because you don't have to have it's not, it, for product stuff. It doesn't seem like it's ever a matter of not having enough power. It's always Too getting it down power. low enough. Yeah. yeah, my my pro photos, I can't use them for product. They're too powerful. I can't get my lights in close enough to what I want them to be. Um, and my, you know, my 600s will dial down to 300 watt seconds, even in a soft box, 300 watt seconds. If the box is a foot and a half away, because that's where I want the light to sculpt, it's too bright. I mean, I'm getting like F22 or something. Um, so that's what the other reason I love the Einsteins and the Alien Bees, because you can take them way down. Mm -hmm. Very, very nice. Those are great. I was going to ask, uh, uh, when you're shooting tethered said do you or let me ask you this do you shoot tethered uh i do on corporate stuff um yeah. more, when i know i've got somebody looking over my shoulder i've got a little tiny little i bought a it's an older little 12 inch power book something i don't know we threw a solid state drive in it and it's older only because the the uh mia uh camera that i bought with the digital back the back is so old that it only works with older Macs that Got still it. have the Firewire or 800 port or something like that. Stupid. Um, yeah, yeah. And I, I did get one of those um, tether tool, tether block things, mm -hmm. which it screws on the bottom and then you snake the core. That thing is awesome. Like I had gotten the little jerk strap things, which are like the, the little things on the string, which they don't feel too secure at all. But this thing is like a piece of solid router metal. Um, and you just screw it on the bottom and then it's got, it's got holes on the, on the bottom of it for different size cords that you just, you know, you screw it up and it's, and that thing is awesome. Like you could, you know, you could swing your camera around like wonder woman and that thing wouldn't come off. Um, so that was, that was good. It's expensive. Everything's so stupidly expensive. It's like a hundred dollars for that dumb thing. Like I love the other tools are very, very expensive. Yeah. But you know what? It's, 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 it, it's, it, it, when you don't have to worry about it on the gig, it's worth it. Yeah, and you said, like you said, you want to buy something for the long room, the long yeah. run. That's yeah, stuff, that's, stuff that's the way to go. Yeah, if you're thinking about shooting tethered, you know, skip the thirty dollar whatever the hell they are, and just buy that that block thing because that's, I mean, that's that's the most. It's like a brick on the bottom. Um, and then I bought another one. It's basically an A clamp that's got one of those little jerk tethery things on the top, and then I just clamp that to the stand that I bring, and then that way, you know, if the table I'm I've got the laptop on moves. The, the quarter the cord's not going to move or anything like that um yeah that's cool anybody yeah, else there shoot tethered all the time or most on product time? on product yeah lee yeah, you I, should uh, i should tethered and i have it. a i have a panel an lcd panel that um, connects to my laptop uh via usb c and okay. then that becomes extended um and i've got a nice long cable on it, it's it's nice. It's uh, oof. I'm gonna say it's about 15 inches. It's a nice size. That's very cool. Yeah. Any of you guys use the panel on top of your camera? The video. 
I, I have a full, I have the large iPad and I do the wireless to the iPad, which is pretty much tethered on wireless. Are you using um, that, uh, what, what's it called, Cam Ranger? I have that that I use sometimes. And then I also use the Canon, whatever direct, whatever their proprietary software is. Oh, that works? Oh yeah, That's to cool. the iPad. Mm -hmm. What do you get on the iPad, the JPEG or you get the, re the full res? Uh, that you just get, I think you get the JPEG, um, but I don't use it for, you know, necessarily saving the image, just for seeing it on a big screen yeah. or doing your I just want to see it big. I really yeah. just want to see it big. Um, yeah. I, Lightroom is nice, but it's overkill for the kind of work that I do. I just want to see it big. So I was, I was seeing, I was watching some guy shooting some video and he had a little screen on top of his camera. Mm -hmm. This was, I'm like... Whoa, yeah. does that work with still photography too? If yeah, I took probably. the picture, would it come back on that that five by yeah. seven screen? Because those, those like hook up with H, HDMI, it's a HDMI cable. Right? cable. Yeah. yeah. I just got one of those uh, two days ago. It's a little five and a quarter inch yeah. HD screen. And uh, I've been doing a lot of stuff with the puppets and I can't get to the camera. So I've got this little screen that's underneath the table that I'm up and so I can basically watch what I'm doing from the camera's view with um, video or with uh, still video. Does it work with still? I, I would imagine. It could. Yeah, as long because it's it's pulling what's coming out of the lens. So I think if you would hit the shutter, it should show up in theory. I, I think. I wonder if you could actually focus with it, actually see what as you're making your shot. I don't know. Oh, I, don't got, know. I don't know I, why I, I couldn't. The only difference between the video and and your and still photography when you're using your camera is just you know whether you're doing one picture or if you like if you're in live view it acts just like a video camera and then you mm -hmm. can take a picture so if you have focus peaking turned on and you're using it in live view then it's going to output to right, the so, yeah I would have to I would have to be in live view then to make that work I believe so. okay I think so I've never used one. But yeah, and then it gives storage, and I, um, you can also I think with those instead those don't have if you got a, like a thirty minute recording time if you wanted to do video, I got mm -hmm. if you're time. using one of those I think that you don't have the thirty minute time. Okay. No, one of the yeah one of the things I've noticed so far is the if I have the camera in live view I think it automatically sh turns itself off after mm -hmm. whatever the thing inside is. Um, and yeah, this, this is the thing I, it just, it just came in. It's a, it's called feel world, feel world 4k. It's a five and a half inch field monitor. Um, and I just, I just got like, I just, today I just set it up and I was mutzing around with it a little bit, but I'll have to, I'll check the manual and see if it says anything about, you should be like, what I mean? Yeah. I imagine stills. I mean, it's just, you just shoot it and it's just shoot it. It should just shoot it over to the screen to show you what you just shot. No, you know, in the Canon Camera Connect thing, you can choose between live view where it's showing you everything live or just displaying the image after you shoot it. So okay. yeah. usually I, I leave it on that or if, if you're doing like headshots or something, you know, so then I can shoot and then already have it there and show it to the person. So you can do it either way. It's kind of nice. I saw you... a, um, a video today and I don't know how many of you guys are Mac people. Um, okay, so Sid is. Any, any other Mac people? Lee is. Um, I saw a guy who is a video, uh, a video editor, professional video editor, does commercials and films, full-length films. Mm -hmm. He bought a Mac Mini with 16 gigs of RAM. He put it up against his $9,000 Mac Pro that is loaded 256 gigs of RAM and the Mac mini in eight out of 10 tests blew the huh. Mac pro out of the water. The biggest thing was the amount of heat. The, they were, he rendered a 4k video on the Mac pro. And then he rendered the same file on the Mac mini. The Mac mini took four minutes longer on a 30 minute file. So the Mac mini took uh, 30 minutes, the pro took 26 minutes. 
the pro got up to 120 volts or whatever. In other words, the, the Mac pro fans kicked on like 30 seconds into it and it was hot. The mini used four volts for the entire thing. Oh. If, You're talking about the M1s, right? The, the M1s, yeah. Oh, oh. Um, and another, I, I got on this M1 <laughs> kick. Another guy uh, did a uh, did a video and he said it's the right now it's the on, the only Mac lap the only Mac desktop you should buy right now is the Mac Mini, and 16 gigs of RAM will be more than you'll ever use on the machine. Like getting it with 64 gigs of RAM and stuff doesn't need it. He was doing Photoshop, browsing on Chrome, music playing, and rendering a video on eight gigabytes of RAM on a $700 Mac mini. I can't do that on my, my mine's five year, my, my uh, 27 inch iMac. I can't do it. And mine's like four and a half years old. I can't do that. Huh. If I got a video playing and I'm in fo Photoshop. I ain't rendering video. <laughs> it's like, right, nah. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna we're just gonna have coffee here, boss, until you're done with whatever the heck you're doing over there. Mm. Uh, very very impressed. And the reason he says the only Mac to buy now is why would you go and spend twenty eight hundred dollars on a loaded i uh, iMac twenty seven inch when you know between now and not too far they're gonna bring that same thing out with an M one. Yep. Which will make it the most un unbelievable machines ever. I mean, I, <laughs> the the speeds he was clocking on that, uh, and he was doing like real world stuff. Like let, let's forget the bench. Let's take this clip of film, I'll put it here. I'll put it there. So, it's really amazing. Hmm. I had a quick question, Sid and Stephanie. You guys <coughs> tethered when you're doing uh, portrait work. Do you have the monitor so that way you can see it, but the client can't? Or do you have it where the client can watch it as you're shooting? Ooh. No, the, the, the subject never sees the monitor. Okay. The, you know, the creative director or whoever's peering over my shoulder, they can look. And then I usually I've got somebody, my, my assistant's hanging out at the, the laptop and he's checking focus to make sure everything's there. But the, no, I, I make sure that they do not see it because the minute they walk over and they start looking, they want to do it in between every shot. Right. Yeah. You take and a the shot, they're going to. If you turn it so there it's facing them, you just lost all eye contact. Yeah. They're not paying attention. They're, they're like looking they're not over gonna look at you. They're look right at the screen. And you can't yeah. get the screen close enough to the camera to right. make it so you can tell the difference. Oh, no. It's, it's uh, not a good plan. Right. I don't let them, yeah. I don't really let them to see, see the images um, much at all when I'm shooting. Because I don't want them, um, some people, and this is cross-gender folks, it doesn't matter, male or female, some people look at that picture and they look at that thing that bothers them every yep. single morning they wake up in the morning, they go, oh, I just really hate the way my nose is crooked, yep. an hour of something. Um, and they, when they look at it, that's what they look for. They mm -hmm. think, oh, my nose is crooked. And you just threw a pail of cold water over the session and you didn't need to <laughs> yeah that's what that's what my fear was is if they're already a little uncomfortable or self-conscious then they're just going to be more aware of i try to yeah. keep all negative negativity off the set it's always positive like oh you look great that looks that looks great if they start not looking great i'll just say okay cool now take a step back and turn your shoulders right that's all i did i just broke the state Mm -hmm. Now they moved and we're back to square one again. Yep. Have them shake it out. Like if things yep. aren't working, I'll just back off and be like, all right, let's shake it out for a second. Um, or usually I'll just be like, I'm going to go grab some water. You know, like that gives them a chance to step away for a second and um, <coughs> let them. I just tell them go to the happy place. <laughs> go to your happy place. Go find it. <laughs> and I'll oh. say it just like that. I said, okay, you're losing it, man. Go to the happy place. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I've tried everything. I found the one where I look at him and said, look, if you don't get your shit together, I'm going to put all these crappy photos on the net. That's, that doesn't work. Right. <laughs> yeah. You don't look at the back of the screen and be like, why do you look like this? Like, what is wrong with you? Like, what's going on? 
I've never no, I, 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 I let them look at the, not all the time. I do, I agree that they, I, their eyes start darting over, mm -hmm. but there's times when I have some that they insist that they want to pose a certain way. And I'm like, okay. And yeah. then I take the picture, then I show it to them and then they stop. And, yeah. and then they start, and then they listen to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when I do when I do headshots, I set the back of the camera to black and white, and then I add a little contrast and a little bit of a boost. Um, and when I when I shoot headshots, I'm shooting it black and white in camera, even though it's recording all the color information. But what I'll do is I get all I'll get them all excited because I'll bring it over and all you're basically seeing what a process shot's going to look like. And I'm like, right, this is it. Like we're on the right. This is oh my god. And then they get like, oh, this is look, this looks incredible. I look amazing in black and white. So every once in a while I do that just to get them fired up. Um, or you know, you can tell, you can see when they start to come down a little bit and they're starting to sort of sag and everything. And, it's and that's like, when right, you change it up. That's when yep, you shake it out and then you bring it over there and you're just like, look, look, look how amazing you're looking. Like this is incredible. And they're like, oh my God, this is incredible. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah. 70% of the time I'm shooting with my with my viewer on black and white. Yep. Yep. I'm yep. Uh, I've I like shot that. I like that idea. I've done like high school seniors stuff when I was doing that. I, I will make sure, like if, if I'm shooting a black and white and I got a shot and I'm like this, there is no way this is going to be a, like, this has to be black and white. I will show it to them while we're shooting so that they think I only captured it in black and white so that down the road when they're like, Oh, well, I like this shot, but do you have it in color? And it's like, Nope. Remember I showed you we're committed. We're black and white all the way. That's all that we got. So that way I can be like, mm, doesn't exist. Nope. Sorry. Black and white's the way to go. Like sometimes I'll push it. Like, that's all. That's that's just how you're gonna get it. You're getting a black and white. This that's what I'm standing behind. So yeah, it's kind of as you can kind of trick. Yeah, you can kind of. But it's digital. <laughs> Everyone's can... you know like I've had mothers. I've had mothers that have like counted. They're <laughs> yeah. like you know like I'll show them a proof of like 35 or 40 images, and they're like I know that you've got at least 200 shots on there, and I'm like what, what did you have like a click counter? Like how are you? How are you doing that? Tell them that you can process it for color it's a slight upgrade charge to render it back to a color file. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I guess if you really want it in color, I could get a color. It, it, it costs cost extra because I have to remember what those colors were like. Exactly. When I, <laughs> I have to run it through a special high pass filter. High color filter. Yeah. Thing in Photoshop and it's going to take a little while. Yeah, and yeah, it's going to, it's like I another, can do it for you. Yeah, 150 bucks. I got to use a whole different processor. It's on a totally different computer, a color computer. Yeah, no, it's. Or yeah, just like look at my computer. It's black and white. That's my computer. <laughs> yep. That's the one I use. <laughs> hey, I did have a question. We we're talking about lights that you think <laughs> about for doing yeah. shoots. What type of modifiers do you do? You have a bunch of you have mostly umbrellas, or do you have some of the pop open soft boxes? Or I'll go. I, 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 oh, you go. I have I have far too many uh, <laughs> modifiers. Yeah. But I do like the one the octaboxes that operate like a umbrella, not the octaboxes where I have to stick the, the wires in. And mm -hmm. I have a couple of those. I've got a, a seven foot across octobox that literally takes a half an hour to set up. Mm -hmm. And and mm -hmm. you run through every curse word that you know in English, Spanish, and French. Even if you don't speak French, you mm -hmm. make it up. They're it's not rods, fun man. to put together. It's not fun yeah. to even take down. Yeah. Uh, but I do have one. I like my 36 and I like my 42 inch octas that come out like an umbrella. I love them. Are they the bounce? The bounce? <laughs> they're bounce umbrellas? Mm -hmm. Yes. That's what I love. I have a 50 inch or something and I call it the soft lighter. But yeah. that's, it's the big bounce umbrella. I, and it's like two seconds. You just yeah, put it out like an umbrella. Yeah, I've got a soft lighter, but I was looking at uh, a headshot video and he was using a seven foot parabolic umbrella and then putting pretty much the soft lighter material on that's like it. A, so it's, that's like a wall of light. Like that's, yeah, well, that's you want to blow using, everything was, in the room. Like you it just was behind him and he was using and he, it. And, and you know what's really light. funny? It's really funny. When you take a parabolic umbrella, and you put which you paid extra money for it to be parabolic, because it shapes the light with that deep parabolic, right. and put a cover over it, 
you took a $300 parabolic <laughs> special thing and turned it into a fucking softbox. <laughs> Big deal. I don't get that. It's like, leave the parabolic alone. Let it do its thing. It's amazing light. Yep. If you want a, the, the soft thing, I, like, I love my soft lighter. I do. I, I have the 63 inch. I have two of them. Match. And it's another thing, by the way, that I'm big on is two matching. When I bought the 36, I bought two. When I bought the 43, I bought two. My, my soft lighters, I bought two. I cannot stand to shoot headshots or beauty with mismatched gear, like an octobox for the main and a softbox for the fill. Oh, no, no, no. I think I, <laughs> Stephanie probably remembers the story about me delivering the big shots to the, uh, the point of purchase. Yeah, my, my, what they look like in the eyes is really, really important to me. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Will be for the rest of my life. I remember that. And even when I'm doing product stuff, I make sure I'm like, oh, turn it that way just a yeah. little bit. Yes, I'm a, I'm a, yeah, I'm all about that. So yeah, I, I get, I have two of every modifier. Uh, another one I do like is the 12, uh, 24 inch square uh, softbox that I have. It's a Godox with a, a grid in it. It's 24 inches square. So it's not really my big people light. Mm -hmm. And I don't really use it a lot for, um, uh, for product. Um, when I say people like in the studio, I wouldn't use it, in the, but on location, oh, I can put the grid on it, focus the light. I can take the grid off, have a little soft box. I can take that off and have a four foot square, shiny light. And it is real poppy. And I really like it a lot. <coughs> what about you, Sid? I for like a decade I have had been using um Westcott makes this 28 inch Apollo softbox which is a square and it's got a little baffle. I've got like six of those. I I just I use that nonstop for like a decade. Like I just love it and then I bought the large version the 50 50 inch. Yeah. And uh if I'm on location or if I'm in the studio and I want something that looks just like a giant window light, I'll bust that out. Um, I have a couple of umbrellas that I always keep in a bag, but to me, umbrellas are just like expendables. They're like gaff tape. Like I know within, you know, six or seven uses, something's going to get broken or the wind's going to catch it and it's going to fly out of here. Um, and then I had a, I had an old alien B, one of those metal beauty dishes that was like, it was black on the outside and it was a oh, soft yeah. light on the inside. And I kept bringing them to, and I, like, I loved that thing. I just loved it. And I would bring it to, to location jobs and every time i would get back there was always like another ding in it and it used to drive me crazy so i found i kept looking at that um it's a what the hell is it? it's a or it's a round collapsible uh, joel grimes the joel grimes rick grimes beauty dish thing okay. and it's ridiculous it was like 300 dollars, and i kept looking at it for like a couple of years and i'm just like it's so stupidly expensive and i finally pulled the plug on one of those things Angel started to sing when I used that thing. It is absolutely incredible. It's like soft, but it it when you pop it open and it locks, it's perfect. It, it does exactly what I want it to do. The light is beautiful. It's a, the right size. Um, it's funny. I bitch about prices on things all the time. I'm just like, why does this have to be so much money? And then when you use it, you're like, oh, okay, I, I, I kind of get it now. Um, so I use that between that and the, I break out the Apollo every once in a while. But recently, because it's so easy to break that beauty dish down, I think I've been using that for everything primary for yeah, three or four years now. Um, it's awesome. I love it. But I, I really love anything that breaks down like an umbrella. The the Westcott stuff at all is breaks down like an umbrella. Um, this other thing I just got, it's kind of like an umbrella. And then a few years ago, just on a lark, I saw something on Amazon. It was like a 40 inch newer octave something or other. And I was like, it's like $30. I'll give it a shot. And that's, that's been really good. I, I bring that when I'm shooting two people um, and it doesn't have much of a baffle. So when I want to get head to toe coverage with a little bit of the, you know, like, and that works, that works pretty good. But I'm primarily the, the Westcots. I use those. Oh my God. People used to like, that was my thing. Everybody was just like, oh, it's the square Octobox guy. And then at some point I started looking at the catch lights and I was just kind of like, I think I'm, I'd rather have a round catch light. Rather I do than like, I, I, I do not like, square catch lights yeah in the eyes of people and i know that sometimes if i'm shooting a model with product and a product is going to call for the 
to the, the squared off softbox. Mm -hmm. uh, since then, I've started using um, big flies of diffusion with a box behind the diffusion. Then I get more of a natural looking yeah. thing in the eye. But right. if I'm doing beauty, I, I really do want a round. I mean, I'm, I'm just a nut, a nut for it. it. It made people photography, if I did headshots with squares, it made them look too commercial. It's like, huh. I was a fashion shooter when I started out. And when I saw models with square eyes, I just, I just saw, you know, some geeky product guy trying to shoot fashion. Cause it yeah. just looked right. I used to use like a reflector under the subject. Oh, so yeah. that the, That's what I was at gonna, some uh, point, at some point, the fact that you could see it on the bottom part of their eyeballs, it just started to bug me. And I was that, just like, that, I'd rather it, have it, just that one light than it bugged that me. I found a way to get rid of it because so what I use underneath the, the model was a drafting table. So I could tilt the, yeah, yep, and I'd put either, um, uh, my my studio mate, sweet mate, uh, used a big piece of polished silver, so when he okay. got that pop under the eye, oh man, it was like two lights. It was like a freaking mirror. Yeah, yeah. Right? That I didn't care much. So I used um, a flat white, painted, uh, spray painted a um, foam core, flat matte white. And I used it and you could barely see it, but you could. But if I turned it, if I kept tilting it, then what it would do is it would light the skin because the skin is diffuse, mm -hmm. but it would be at an angle so that the reflection wouldn't come back into the shiny oh, part of the eye. Okay. Uh, so it was always tilted down away from them. Huh. Um, yeah, I got to the point too. So I did, I did like that one catch light in the eye. Really, 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 uh, that was important to me. Yep. So I, I was going to ask if you do clamshell instead of using a reflector underneath, do you just use the two, two round and then just. You, you I've done even... it for a, for the effect because the effect is cool, but you do end up with two catch lights in the eyes. Yeah, you do. Um, a lot of that was very fashionable uh, in the seventies and the eighties. Um, yep. Very fashionable. In fact, more than more than two was fashionable. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some great uh, Jill Bensimon headshots. He's got like six or eight little things. Mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, I can't think of his uh, name right off hand, but he would shoot headshots of the models um, like with a 150 on a Hasselblad. So figure about an 85, 50 on a Hasselblad. And he'd have nine or 10 lights uh, with really tiny umbrellas on them like 12 inch umbrellas, you know, way behind him, like That's an crazy. arc of these things. So when you you see the girl, then she'd had all these little pinpoints of lights, like in an arc. It was beautiful light, but I just, I never did get into the catch light. Someone asked on Facebook why people are buying ring lights. I can't stand ring lights. The light yeah. is beautiful. No doubt. The, the circle in the eye is just, I'm sorry. I, it bugs yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. But the light, the the soft light is is awesome. Yeah, sh shadowless light is really nice. Yeah, but it's Why funny. To watch, it's fun to watch those things move in in phases. You know, like everybody wants that David LaChapelle look, so they want to get the ring light, and they want to, and and then they. It's interesting to watch. You know, like gel, like gels are making a comeback, which is interesting. Um, you know, watching people with all kinds of colors and stuff, and then these silly dappled backdrops are making a comeback. Like everything was solid colors for a while, and now everybody. One of my wants to... favorite non-headshot things was to take four 18-inch um, umbrellas, which I was able to get. I can't get them anymore. They were made for video, but they were eight little 18-inch umbrellas and put four heads around, one above the camera, one below the camera, side by side, four umbrellas, and I could put a model up against mm -hmm. the wall and it would look just like a ring light. Mm -hmm. But it wouldn't present a ring in the in the eyes it would just present four highlights yep. that was kind of fun to do if she moved away from the wall it was just kind of a, a wall of light you know you yep. had to get her right up next to so you could see that little shadow that was fun do you remember when people were cutting giant ring lights out of pieces of wood oh, and then screwing right. light bulbs and that was awesome <laughs> that was so like early 2000s is the whole phase 
And everybody had these oh, giant things they, on wheels that they would bring in, and they're like, "Look, I've got thirty six light bulbs all screwed yeah, into and a circle." Can only go, yeah, I got forty two light bulbs. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, I just got fifty five. I love those fads; they're so ridiculous, and it's so awesome to watch how these things. Just, Every, like, there's a guy. A lot of how to wear sunglasses. <laughs> <laughs> there's a there's a photographer. Um. Uh, and I won't mention his name. Hurley, <laughs> uh, who made a whole career. Oh, out of that crappy light going around saying oh yeah models love my light i have modeling agency friends they're going i would never use that mm -hmm. but there was a whole lot of backstory going on there he's a big time lighting guru on on you now he is yeah did you see his he like he's a huckster he's such a huckster yeah don't even I, give me so, <laughs> I, I, I you know there's some things in the world i don't get i don't get that one i don't get that at all no I, I get his look in his it was an interesting look um it's weird now that you know he's he's sort of become a franchise and like he can franchise out his headshots to other shooters and stuff but man like he he you know he's making water ballasts now instead of sand but like he's got a whole it's it's weird it's well it's good the for the him. internet That's yeah i mean he's marketed it like crazy yeah it's so just it's been to me it was uh schlock photography turned into like oh my god the hottest thing since forever and i couldn't see it at all i had no personality wasn't interesting um but those those people seem to rise to the top because the average of the beginning photographer is who they're after they're yeah. not peter hurley's not trying to to get you interested you're a photographer he's not going right. to change stephanie's mind she's a photographer she's already got a design she's already got something going on yeah he um, it's 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 easy to gravitate towards people that influence you. Yes, um, yes. But you don't want to get trapped into that's the only way you shoot is by emulating the that particular person. Um, and I think that's where the trap is, is you've, you, it's cool to be inspired by them and it's, it's cool to learn how they do things. Unless, yeah, unless of course you learn from someone who invented natural light, like Sue Brown. <laughs> 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 I've run into them. You know, uh, nobody ever got natural light studio shots before Sue Bryce, swear to God. Never <laughs> happened. All that stuff by Irving Penn, fake, fake, fake. Um, anyway, she's a nice lady. Um, be uh, before we go, I want to leave you some with something. This is a rule of advertising that I had forgotten. And I heard it mentioned the other day. And it all my memories of doing this and talking with clients came flooding back. It was like a little part of my brain reawakened. This is something for all of you to remember as your marketing. Studies have shown that for an ad to be effective, the viewer has to see it no fewer than seven times. Mm -hmm. So those of you who are sending out postcards and you're on your third postcard and wondering why you're not getting hit yet, <laughs> remind, remind you, Guess that they don't know who you are until they've gotten the seventh postcard. It's a, the yeah. long haul. Yes. That you're in. You're planning your name in their brain. And yeah. It takes X amount of time or whatever you're, you're planting. It goes into their brain. Yeah. I had a, a Dan Winter uses a uh, ring light a lot, or he did. And so. Yeah, but when he, Dan Winter, it was the what? correct light for the situation because Dan Winters never followed fads. He didn't follow. Uh, Dan Winters makes his own way. So, so if someone like Dan Winters used it. I remember. Um, let me see if I can bring back a name for. Sid, let's see if said Sid, Sid um, uh, Von Wangenheim, Chris Von Wagenheim. I think so. Yeah. Black and white young kid died when he was 28 in a car crash in, uh, in Antibes, France, actually. Carmen, I believe. He was in well, the French Riviera. Uh, Chris von Wagenheim, he's the very first one who used a ring light in fashion. And he was using the old Nikon medical ring light. That's what they were used for, forensic science. Yep. Uh, and uh, gosh, if you can look back, look up uh, Chris's work, you just get a kick out of it. It was a, just, this guy was like, so cutting edge, such a brilliant young man. What a loss. Um, but yeah, the, the, uh, 
the things move in fads they move in cycles yeah and it's it's hard to you know like la chapelle his whole career was all about that ring light and color like and that was his that was all he did so it's it's hard to it's cool to have this thing and you want to use it all the time i had bought lomography when they came out with those petzl digital lenses and everything and it's awesome but it only has limited use and and i don't want to use it to the point where everyone's just like oh there's that stupid petzl guy again like it's all he did you got to use it correctly you can't just let it dictate you know yeah, like it's yeah yeah so oh yeah yeah i remember those people the one with find the horses. A, <laughs> people find a, something that works for them um yeah and then they have to do a uh, it's the sequel, you know, it's the, everything's mm -hmm. a sequel, you know, there was um, in rock and roll, somebody come out with a big hit and you know, the next song that's going to come out, is going to sound just like that one. Yeah. Just Look how 80s little. those images are. They're so gorgeous. Look at that. Oh, it's like Chris was Velvia blues an and like, oh. just an amazing, amazing young man. And everybody, my, my, my sister-in-law worked with him and she said he was just, she was a model. My sister-in-law, my ex-sister-in-law was a model. Um, and, uh, you know, just ring flash, man. Just, mm -hmm. he, he, he explored it. He, he did it every which way. Christy Brinkley, wonder whatever happened to her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what a face. She's raising her, she's raising her, uh, uh, super girl, model daughter, I think, at this point. Well, probably. Um, you, you've shot some people that have gone on to act and stuff, right? Yeah. 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 Um, it's kind of cool. When she was 14, I photographed her. Now I can't think of her name. <sighs> she was uh, Beverly Hills 90210. Oh. Long, straight, blonde hair. Um, then she went on to... Um, Tori Spelling? No, no, Tori. No, Tori's a California girl. This was, I can't, I can't think of her name. Um, yeah, uh, she used to babysit for my daughter. She was my daughter's babysitter, <laughs> and she was really adorable. And I told her mom she should, she should model. She should. Act, well, she was too short to model, but she should be an actor. And her mom said, "Well, let's do it." You know. So I did some pictures of her, and I took her over, took the pictures over to every agent in town. <laughs> Who turned her down because hmm. they were too short yeah she was too short and i remember saying to ruth layton let me let me ask my wife her name i remember saying to ruth layton ruth trust me on this this girl's got what it's take what it takes me ask my wife Aaron? What do you think they were doing to, to make that dog so angry that it was just like viciously barking like that? I think the idea is that, that she's choking. He has a choker on. Oh, is that what it is? It was Jenny Gar. Yeah, I think she's, she's just Jenny pulling Gar back on him. Um, and uh, so uh, we went over to California, her mother and I and her went to California. I uh, got a hotel room there. We were going to be there a week. We, it took us one day. We went to a uh, uh, casting director from Disney. She walked in the door and he signed her up. And I went home the next day. That's uh, awesome. Now, do you still keep, do you like still have those shots somewhere? Do you keep all that stuff or? No, I have a few of them. I have a few of those, but no, I got no. all the little black and whites and stuff I did. But I do have some, I have a, a little box of my favorite takes. Yeah. Of stuff. Yeah. That, that one from the other day that you did in 1982 or 84 is really sweet. Oh, today? Oh, yeah, the girl with the feather earring? Yeah. Yeah. We were, we were just, it was, uh, we were just getting in the car. Uh, we'd been out shooting. She parked uh, her car at the, uh, at the, the car park down the, down the street. And I was going to get, we were getting in the car to take her back because I'd come back, unloaded the gear. I was going to take her to her car. And I had my camera on my neck with my uh, trusty F3 and uh, I think it's a 180 millimeter lens. And um, she looks so beautiful in that, that super, super soft light. 
I just snapped off a few shots. You know, she was she was she was being a model, you know, like that. And then she <laughs> laughed and she became herself just for a second, right? And that's the shot. That's yeah. the shot. All right. Well, have a good weekend, everyone. Everybody, thanks for coming out. Sid, my friend, hope you had a good Thanksgiving. Yes, you too. I hope everybody did. Yeah. Me yeah. too. Yeah. Good, good. We will uh we'll see you guys next week. Bring some stuff to share, everybody. Yeah. For next show week. Bring some share pictures next bring week. Something. Show oh, us well. what you've been working on. Sounds good. Great idea. All right. Thanks. Be safe. Have a good week, everybody. See you tomorrow, Bye. then. Okay. Bye.